In this video, we'll cover how to connect an analog sensor to the IN100 via the ADC capable GPIO pins. We'll configure the settings for the ADC as well as be able to read the data from the sensor and then include that in the advertising packet. So let's get started. Let's go over a little bit of introduction about the ADC configuration and the support with the IN100. So first, the IN100 has four analog input channels available. These are the four channels, channel 0, channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3, and they correspond to the following mixed signal pins, or GPIOs, 4, 5, 6, and 7. It contains an 11-bit ADC with a reference voltage of 0.8 volts. This means that we have ADC values ranging from 0 to 2047, which is the 11 bits, and the analog input signal range is from zero to two times the reference voltage, meaning that the analog input signal can be up to 1.6 volts. So as a note, if you do have an analog sensor that outputs higher than 1.6 volts, then you'll need to utilize a voltage divider circuit to bring the voltage down to 1.6 volts maximum when input into the ADC pin on the IN100. Here's what a voltage divider circuit looks like. The Basically the input, this VN, would be the signal coming from the sensor and then you would read from V out and then you would choose the two resistors to split the circuit and split the voltage according to the ratio that you want so that the V out, the maximum for V out would be under the maximum allowed voltage for the input to the ADC pin. We'll show an example of the how to do this later in this video. Another important feature available with the IN100 is that we can configure to turn off the power supply to the sensor when we're not using it. This means that we can really dial down the power consumption of our device and achieve longer battery life. And again, all of this is done with no programming and via the Nano Beacon config tool. In order to configure the ADC, we navigate to the ADC section here on the left hand side. And here you can see the different ADC channels that are available and their corresponding GPIO pin numbers. As you can see, ADC channel zero corresponds to the mixed signal GPIO number four, ADC channel 1 corresponds to GPIO 5, and so on. Let's enable channel 0 just to see the settings that we can set. So here we can see a few sections. First we have the power switch select. This is what we talked about just previously and allows us to disable the power supply to the sensor when not in need. And choosing either option, the ground or VCC, will basically depend on your application and use case, but in general, the VCC option will be the most common. Second, we have the sampling configuration, which is usually best left at the default settings with two samples to skip and 16 for the number of samples to average. However, if needed, these can be modified to match the specific application requirements as well. And the final section we have is for configuring the unit mapping. This should be left unmodified if the voltage output from the sensor is non-linear. However, in that case, the output of the ADC will map to the digital equivalent of the input voltage from the sensor. If the sensor output is linear, which is what we'll see in our use case for the live demo in this video, then you can configure the unit mapping to do a conversion from the sensor output voltage to the desired ADC output unit that you want to see. We'll see an example of this again, but for more detailed information, refer to the Nano Beacon Config Tool user manual. And finally, keep in mind that if we want to use and enable a specific ADC channel, then we need to make sure that the digital I.O. setting is set to default or disable for that pin. Okay, let's move on to a real world example. So for this video's live demo, we'll, we'll be using the DF Robot Capacitive Soil Moisture Sensor. This is the web page and the documentation for this. This has all the information about the sensor and includes the features and specifications as well. We'll connect the sensor to one of the ADC GPIO pens. We'll configure it and then include the ADC readings in the advertising packet and monitor that on a mobile phone to see the data that comes in and see that it matches the actual output voltage. We'll also adjust the level of water that the sensor is exposed to to generate different reading outputs and see that on the 
mobile side as well when we scan for the advertising packets. The sensor outputs around 2.95 volts when no water is detected in dry conditions. For example, what's shown on the left side here and the output voltage will go down as the water level increases and it's around 0.5 volts at the in the middle at the recommended depth. It is recommended that the water level not increase above this warning line indicated on the sensor probe. Let's go ahead and take a look at the connections and hardware setup. So here I'm using a breadboard as you can see on the right side and this on the left side shows you the diagram of the circuit. I have a voltage divider set up with identical resistors and this allows me to basically split the voltage in half. So as we saw, it's uh, around 2.9, 2.95 output maximum from the sensor. This means that the maximum reading that we'll get in between these two resistors when they're equal in value is going to be half of that. So it's around 1.5 volts. So this allows us to stay under the 1.6 volt maximum that's allowed to be input into the ADC pin to convert the values correctly. Here we can see this output or the, the voltage in between the two resistors is connected to the MGPI04, which is ADC channel zero. We have ground connected to the bottom of the resistor as well as to the ground connectors to the moisture sensor itself. The signal from signal line from the moisture sensor will go to the re first resistor in the line, and then VCC is connected directly to VBAT on the IN100. You can see a picture of this on the right side. Here's a little bit more close up. As you can see here, these are the two resistors and I have the connection. This wire is going to the MGPIO4, which is reading at the connection of these resistors. And these all three cables here are going to ground. And this top one is coming from the signal. So if we look at that a little bit closer, this is what it looks like. Here are the connections on the IN100. We have three cables coming out from the IN100. The VBAT is going to supply the power to the sensor itself. And then ground is going to the breadboard as we saw before. And MGPIO4 again is reading in between the two resistors or where they are connected. These are the lines that are coming out from the sensor. We have the signal, which again goes to the circuit, the voltage divider, the VCC goes directly to the IN100. And then we have the ground connections that go to the breadboard as well, which is connected to the ground from the IN100. Okay, let's go ahead and configure this. So the first thing that we have is since we are dividing the voltage in half, that means that the value of 1.4 is actually 2.8. And in the case of 0.4, it will correspond to 0.8 volts. We we'll won't touch the sampling configuration or the power switch select, but for now, let's just stick with that. Let's go ahead, we enabled this. We made sure that the GPIO is set to default for MGPIO4, whether it's disable or default, either way. And then when the advertising, we have to go and set and include the advertising to, um, or include the ADC readings to be included in the advertising. And for this, I'm just gonna call it, call it soil, manufacturer specific data, I'm gonna enable that, and then include the ADC channel zero. I'm gonna include it in big Endian that will make the most significant byte appear before the least significant byte in the advertising data, making it easier to read. So I'm gonna make sure and append data Take a look at the advertising data just to make sure that I included everything. We have a complete name, which will be SOIL, soil. And then we have the ADC with big Endian with byte one becoming coming before byte zero, which we'll see here shortly. So right now I'm ready to run in RAM. And once I do that, I should start to see advertising packets. Okay, so I also have the reading of the voltage directly on a multimeter. And this is reading across the signal to ground. So this will give us the full voltage of the sensor, whatever it outputs directly. This is not the, this is basically double the voltage that's going into the ADC channel. And we'll just use this for reference when we compare the values included in the advertising packet with what the sensor is actually outputting. 
So right now it's at the recommended depth and we see a value of around 2d6. So let's go ahead and convert this. So the way we convert this is we convert this to decimal and then we have to multiply by the unit. So if we go back to ADC, look at the settings and we look at the unit for one least significant bit, we'll see that it's this number. So I'm just going to multiply that by the number and we get around 567, which is very close to what we are seeing on the multimeter. Now let's go ahead and raise the sensor up to around 60% and see what the value is. So here I have it immersed to around 60% and the value that we see on the multimeter is around 1.51, 1.52 volts. And the value on the in the advertising packet is around 768 hex. So let's go ahead and do the conversion. If we convert it and multiply it by the value, we get around 1.48, which is very close to what we saw on the multimeter. And finally, the final test that we're gonna do is just to remove the water sensor completely and dry it out and make sure there is no water on it. So I've removed the sensor from the water, dried it out, and as we can see, it's around 2.965 volts on the multimeter and the value on the in the advertising packet is around ECB or ECC. Let's go ahead and convert ECC, multiply it by the unit number, and it's around 2.96. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.